Hi, we just got an update today on the Victoria Big Battery Fire, the uh, Tesla Mega Pack. Um, it's a 300 mil megawatt, milliwatt, 300 megawatt facility uh, in Moorabool in Victoria. And on July 30th, this actually, uh, this year, it um, caught a light. So in less than two months, they've already uh, come to their conclusions what uh, caused this fire of the uh, Tesla Mega Packs and um, the, what measures need to be put in place to, you know, stop this happening happening again and I think they're almost ready to go they put those measures in place they're almost ready to go back online again so um, yeah here's some photos if you remember it's a big 300 megawatt uh, facility here and one of the packs caught on uh, fire these are actually um, two packs so a mega pack is just one of these uh, like rows here. They put the like two of them back to back and then uh, space them like that. But essentially, one of those is a mega pack, and one of them caught on fire uh, first. I'm not sure which part caught on fire first, which you know end it was whatever but of course this one being butted right up next to it there was probably no way that this was this second pack was not going to catch on fire but it was a fault in the first uh pack which caused uh, this uh, fire which then spread to a second one and you can see some uh charring on a third pack over here but the report only says that they only lost two mega packs so i presume that was just like superficial um you know char into the outside metal doors on the thing or whatever so it's all good they only lost two mega packs thanks to the uh, cfa the country fire authority in uh, victoria you can see that they're spraying water they set up uh, water here to stop the fire actually spreading to uh you know because the, the prevailing wind was going in this direction like this so they set up their hoses on this side to try and prevent uh the fire spreading so if they were more densely packed and you can see here how the first one's effectively burned out and the second one caught on fire at that point but they didn't see the charring up there on that one but uh, i believe that one survived so um yeah they only lost the two mega packs and because the wind was going in this direction like this um yeah if it was going in the other direction they might it might of you know because of the closeness of these uh two other packs here these ones might have caught on fire as well but uh yeah the cfa did very well to stop to control the spread of this fire of course they couldn't put the fire out um because you can't put lithium ion uh battery fires like this out there exothermic once they catch on fire you pretty much just got to let them burn out and contain it and stop it from uh spreading pretty much so anyway, let's go over and see if we can find out what actually caused this. So it was uh, the investigation was handed over to Energy Safe uh, Victoria, who's like a government uh, body who oversees safety in this sort of you know energy infrastructure. I'm not sure what their actual scope is, but it obviously involved this. So it was passed over to them. So let's have a read. Uh, cooling system leak led to Victorian Big Battery Fire. Energy Safe Victoria has concluded that the Victorian Big Battery Fire most likely resulted after a cooling system leak caused a short circuit in an electrical component in a mega pack. So it sounds like it was a cooling system within the one mega pack. Um, whether or not that is actually self-contained, if anyone knows, please leave it in the comments down below. But I assume it's like each mega pack is like they they manufacture and they ship them in, on the back of a truck and they just drop them in. And it contains a self-contained cooling system but i don't know whether or not that is like just a recirculating thing or whether it requires um you know external coolant from outside and then it has to be hooked up by system contractors and things like that i don't know if you've got any details leave it in the comments down below the independent energy safety regulator delivered its findings following an almost two-month investigation in the late July blaze at the Morable site. ESV conducted extensive investigations at the site while analysing data from the site owner Neon. Yeah, this is not Tesla owned. It's owned by a huge um, energy. Well, they won energy. I think they mainly do energy. Uh, Neonon, and they're the ones who. Uh, purchased the Tesla battery packs and then installed them and they're the ones who are renting it out to the uh, energy uh, grid for storage and you know the, the energy providers uh, actually buy um, storage space on that system it's kind of like I don't know, it's like energy equivalent of cloud storage so they analyzed data from the site owner Neon and its contractors UGL, I don't know who that is, and uh, Tesla. So Tesla is just a contractor in this. They don't actually run the site. They just provide the mega packs and probably, you know, technical assistance and all that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe they have monitoring systems as well, which we'll get into. That seems to be one of the things. So after extensive inquiries, ESV found a mega pack cooling system leak 
caused a short circuit resulting in overheating that led to a fire in a nearby battery compartment, which consequently damaged two mega packs. So that's interesting. They say it led to a fire in a nearby battery compartment. So that indicates that the short wasn't in like it wasn't one of the cells because uh, these, you know, they're manufactured in like, um, I think we've saw a photo in the previous video. They're manufactured in like trays of cells that they kind of like slot into like a rack uh, kind of thing. And each one of those is supposed to, there's uh, various standards and requirements for these cells. Where, you know, if they short circuit, they go exothermic and they, uh, you know, heat up or whatever. They're not supposed to spread to the other cells in the pack. And um, so they, they're supposed to be rated for that. Um, so yeah, it says a fire in a nearby, led to a fire in a nearby battery compartment. So the, the overheating, maybe in some other aspect of the mega pack caused the cells to heat up and too far and they then the cooling system couldn't cool down the pack and then the batteries just went uh, we, and then it damaged one mega pack but then the fire of that mega pack spread to the other pack obviously there were further contributory factors with the mega pack in question being switched off into an offline service mode resulting in the protection systems being inactive and this is one of the things that they fixed up we'll actually read th this is not the report this is just like a summary we'll read the uh, the short uh, well the findings in a minute uh, which goes in a little bit more detail but um, yeah basically uh, one of the problems was that um, the system could go into like an offline state and then the, that turns off the protection system. So yeah, that seems to be a big oopsie. And then another issue was a 24 hour delay in connecting the batteries to the uh, SCADA system, uh, which is supervisory and control and data acquisition. That's what it stands for. SCADA is just a, basically a monitoring system. That's basically what it is. Also meant that there was no active monitoring of the mega pack alarms because there's a 24 hour delay. And we'll there's more detail in the next uh, document on that. So before they can go back online, uh, these are the things that they have to have the owners and operators uh, implement as additional safety uh, measures. So uh, the first one is mega pack cooling systems are fully pressure tested when installed on site. So as I said before, like I don't know whether or not it's like completely self-contained or whether or not it requires fluid from out side like on site uh, facility in that case it's more of a, a facility setup kind of thing but anyway they want them to do full pressure testing when they can install it on site because moving these things so they manufacture these overseas and they have to be shipped all the way to Australia here halfway around the planet to uh, then be installed and like just the vibration and shock and everything of transporting these things is it's probably horrific right so yeah um that could have who knows it might have been like a shipping uh issue uh, perhaps or something like that um so yeah they want them to fully pressurize uh test them when they're installed on site um so apparently they didn't do that and then mega pack cooling systems are inspected for leaks after testing so presumably uh they didn't do that as well they presume they just trucked them in hooked them up and Bob's your uncle. Shorter connection times to the SCADA system to help alert Tesla with specific alarms. Yeah, we'll see this in more detail in a minute. That's the one that took a 24 hour delay up here. Um, and that so they didn't get any alarms that this thing was on fire. Um, so yeah, I don't, not, not even sure if the site was manned at the time um, that it actually uh, caught on fire. So yeah, monitoring is important. A new battery module isolation loss alarm has been added. Um, I presume, yeah, that goes back to the base, wherever the base uh, happens to be, the base uh, command center. And so that's a presumably a totally independent battery module isolation alarm. I pr would presume that would be like a, a hardware or at least a firmware modification in the battery um, in the Tesla uh, pack itself. Procedure changes, yeah. Anyway, ESV is satisfied the site can safely recommence commissioning on the 29th of September. That's tomorrow <laughs> as these changes have been made they've all been made okay there you go but here's an important one which i touched on in the previous video further work needs to take place to ensure the mega packs are engineered to fully mitigate the risk of fire spread from one unit to another under victorian conditions so yeah like if we're going to buy any more of these we need to make sure that they're you know it can't spread to another pack and that gets back to 
um, as we said, like spacing. The only the reason the other one, like there's no way you're going to avoid this other one catching on fire. It's like almost butted up. Like there's what is the gap in there? Like that far? It's just just the heat is going to really affect that. And as I said, if the wind's blowing in that direction, then um, yeah, the other you know you could have lost maybe four, you know, three or four packs or something like that. Um, there is large gaps here, so they want them to do further work in that regards in uh, how they can ensure that they're engineered to fully mitigate the risk of fire spread. I don't know, are they going to like install some, you know, a brick wall between them or something like that around them? I don't know. Um, but obviously they're able to maintain uh, the blaze um, just to this. So obviously, like the, because this one like heated up over here. So, but it, it wasn't presumably wasn't uh, lost. So, you know, the gap between them in this direction seems to be adequate. Um, at least in this, you know, we've only got one uh, example here, but I guess if the wind was blowing upwards like that, maybe, yeah, these ones would be toast too. Even that gap might not be enough. But anyway, they want them to do further stuff to make sure that's not possible. So there you go. That's the takeaway for that. Let's now go look uh, at the, for those who want a little bit more detail, the statement of technical find is not very long. It's only three pages long. The Victorian big battery experienced a fire that involves two mega packs during commissioning. Once the CFA had brought the situation under control, it handed control of the site to Energy Safe Victoria and then commenced an investigation in the incident to determine its root causes and what actions should be taken to prevent a reoccurrence. NEE owned international ends contractors UGL and Tesla, uh, who respectively own and operate VBB site, have co operated with ESV throughout this investigation. Methodology two mega packs, each being a shipping container sized battery unit, were completely consumed by the fire. The most likely root cause was determined by by Tesla's engineering investigation and recreation of events to replicate real data from the incident in order to determine most likely the root cause. The following findings are informed by testing undertaken by Tesla, examination of the scene by ESV and other Victorian agencies, video surveillance footy and telemetry data from the original incident. So they're, they're heavily relying on Tesla to like recreate uh, this thing, um, and, you know, model it and re maybe they got a real mega pack and they simulated, you know, um, I'm sure he can do a lot in the software to uh, simulate this kind of uh, fault. Obviously, they wouldn't have recreated it in a real mega pack because there was almost certainly nothing left of this, just a, you know, melted, molten mess. Um, so, yeah, there probably wasn't anything physical, much physical uh, to investigate. So they pretty much had to model this. Root cause. The most likely root cause of the incident was a leak within the Megapack cooling system that caused a short circuit that led to a fire in an electronic component. There you go. So more specific, it is not a battery. A component caught fire. I'd really love to know what uh, component actually caught fire in there. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be a PCB component. It could be, you know, a, like a, I don't know, a relay caught fire or a big SCR caught fire or, you know, like something. I don't know. It could be anything. This resulted in heating that led to a thermal runaway and fire in an adjacent battery compartment within one mega pack, which spread to an adjacent second mega pack. So there you go. It's a fire in some component um, in there because these are like massive powers. So they're going to have like big, uh, you know, huge, massive relays and, and SCRs and other, you know, stuff in there to, you know, switch power and disconnect and all sorts of stuff. So who knows what component caught on fire, but it was obviously near enough to the adjacent battery compartment um, to, yeah, the battery's heated up and you don't want to heat up lithium-ion batteries too much, even though they're engineered to stop uh, spread. Once the batteries catch on fire, if your cooling system's then got a leak and it's it's not working um, as actual actually designed, then, yeah, you're going to come a gutter. Contributory factors. A number of other factors contributed to this incident and the destruction of the entire mega pack. Had these contribu yeah, contributory factors not been present, the initial fault would likely have been identified and either manually or automatically contained. So that's interesting. They say, you know, this fault should not have led to um, this particular thing if, the, if these extra factors... Uh, weren't in play. Uh, and here's the one about the uh, SCADA system and the uh, 24 hours. The super, the SCADA system for the Megapack took 24 hours to map the control system and provide, map to the control system and provide full data functionality and oversight to operators. Wow, that, that's actually a long time, you know. This thing was charging during this time and it wasn't 
um, it wasn't providing uh, data functionality during that time. The mega pack that caught fire had been in service for 13 hours, yeah, before being switched into an offline mode when it was no longer required as part of the commissioning process. Okay, so somebody manually switched it. It was working for 13 hours and then somebody, they switched it into a, an offline mode for some reason we don't know why this this prevented the receipt of alarms at the control facility well yeah that that's a problem hence why they're making them basically fix this uh issue because if it if it's taken offline that should not prevent the alarms to go back to the control facility yeah that that is a mistake that certainly would have alerted to them whether or not this would have uh stopped it um we don't know but yeah, that was certainly a contributory factor. A key lock was operated correctly to switch the meg pack to an offline service state. Okay, so somebody's got a key lock somewhere and went, eh, we don't need that pack for some reason, which was no longer required for ongoing commissioning. But this call, so doing that, caused the, the telemetry systems for monitoring the condition of the now out of service mega pack to shut down and so remove visibility of the developing event. Okay, so that means, yeah, they weren't able to monitor it. Um, you know, they like they would probably, you know, there'd be temperature data being sent back, a whole slew of data being sent back, and they weren't able to monitor, uh, presumably, like a rise in temperature, uh, which uh, caused this issue. So the battery cooling system to shut down. So putting it in offline state, offline service mode. It shuts down the cooling system. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a problem. But it also, uh, switching into offline mode, um, it turns off the battery protection system as well, including the high voltage controller that could have operated a pyrotechnic fuse to disconnect the faulty battery unit. Wow, that's interesting. But it, it's saying that the fault was in the component, which then caused heat to the nearby battery pack. So... I'm not sure what hitting the pyrotechnic fuse would have done. Well, maybe that would have stopped current from the other batteries and then a, a dunno. Lessons learned and preventing a reoccurrence. The following actions have been put in place to prevent a reoccurrence of this incident. Each mega pack cooling system is to be fully functionally and pressure tested when installed on site and before it's put into service. Yes, because ultimately that was the cause of this, was there was a leak in the cooling system, whether or not it was leak when it was first installed or whether or not it failed. Um, I... Yeah, we, we just don't know, really. Each Megapack cooling system in its entirety is to be physically inspected for leaks after it has been functionally and pressure tested on site. Right, so somebody's got to go around and, you know, yeah, it's been pressure tested, it's all certified, but we're going to check for leaks anyway. Now, come to think of it, I can kind of see how a coolant system leak is the most likely thing, because a leak from a cooling system, right, it's part, you know, it's got liquid, whatever that liquid is flowing through, you know, hoses with all sorts of hose clamps on them, and, you know, it's probably a, right, a, quite a complex system within this gigantic mega pack, the size of a shipping uh, container. It's probably got tons of connections in there. It only needs to have one of those connections to be dodgy uh, for the coolant to start leaking out, and then you're going to, if it's not a continuously replenished thing, if it's a closed loop system, it's going to slowly leak out, you don't have as much coolant in there, and well, it's not as effective, and it's eventually going to leak it all out, I guess, depending on where the uh, leak is, and then you've got no cooling at all. So yeah, that, those sort of, all those connections could have been, uh, possibly, this is just speculation, um, it could have been, uh, you know, d dislodged or something due to shipping vibration, shock, by going by transporting these halfway around the planet, um, uh, that's a thing I've got experience in, in shock and vibration in shipping stuff, and it's bad enough just on PCBs and things, let alone all this all this mechanical sort of stuffs. Yeah, that's why they're saying they should be physically inspected, uh, physically inspected for leaks after they're installed and then pressure tested. The SCADA system has been modified so that it now maps in one hour instead of 24 hours and to be verified before power flow is enabled to ensure real-time data is available to operators. See, yeah, the, one of the problems was, was, was that they were um, using this for 13 hours. They were putting energy into this pack. They were charging it up from the uh, grid, using it for 13 hours before. Uh, they then put it into offline mode for some reason. And during that time, uh, it was in the first 24-hour period, so it ha actually had no monitoring data coming back at all during that charge time. So, yeah. Um, so now they're saying not a, it should do it in an hour, but they shouldn't even use it at all before 
the monitoring systems in place. And that obviously makes sense. A new battery module isolation loss alarm has been added to the firmware. Okay, yeah, I <laughs> mentioned that before. Yeah, because they're going around installing hardware on new on all of them. So they're able to do that in firmware. That's pretty cool. Uh, so hats off to the uh, Tesla designers. They obviously, you know, were able to do that in firmware or because uh, the hardware had the ability to do that and they were able to attack it on the firmware. Nice. Uh, this modem, they can even do that remotely, I guess. Can they upgrade the firmware remotely? Or does someone have to go around to each cabinet and uh, then plug in a cable and update the firmware. I don't know if you know, leave it in the comments. This modification also automatically removes the battery module from service until the alarm is investigated. Right, so that'll just take them into non-service mode. Um, of course, if you've got an alarm somewhere, you want to be taking that pack offline. Changes have been made to the procedure for the usage of the key lock for mega packs during commissioning operation. We saw the telemetry system is operational. Yeah, that's part of the one we read before. The high voltage controller that operates the pyrotechnic fuse remains in service when the key lock is isolated. Yeah, that was a, that was a, I think that was probably a pretty big oversight. Uh, whether or not that could have stopped the fire, don't know. Designers are also working to ensure the mega packs are engineered to fully mitigate the risk of fire propagation from one unit to another under Victorian climatic conditions with proposed mitigation procedures to be rolled out to applicable mega packs globally. Um, so yeah, so they're going to uh, they're going to come up with some solution like and but it's real, like Tesla as far as I know Tesla only sell the mega packs. It's up to the installers in each country, the owners and the operators and installers in each country to determine the physical layout. I mean, this is obviously, they're talking about physical layout here, right? That, that's the only thing they can be talking about here um, is to prevent the risk of fire propagation from one to another. The reason it propagated from one to another is because there were like that much gap between two packs and both of them went up. Um, of course, they were too close. So I don't know how they can do that with this facility now, how they can retrofit it. I mean, you know, what are you going to put a big brick wall in the gap between there? Probably got enough room for a brick wall, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure what that deal is. I'm not sure if they can retrofit this existing facility to do that or not. But you know, like, but you could also say that. Uh, well, I'm I'm happy to accept the if there's one pack that catches on fire for whatever reason. You know, there, there's no way this it will absolutely guarantee this will never happen again. You know, Murphy's law. Um, you know, things happen. Um, things fail and. You can't get every single uh, contingency, but if one catches on fire, well, we're happy to lose two. You know that could be a tr that could be a trade-off. That um, I guess is up to the operators and the owners. Conclusion: The incident was most likely initiated by a megapack coolant leak. Uh, they they're saying most likely. This is the most likely scenario. It's not guaranteed, but. Yeah, they think this is what happened. The absence of a number of monitoring and protection systems that would have been available had the initial mega pack not been subsequently switched offline service mode allowed the initial fault to go undetected and result in the total loss of the two packs. Okay, so they're kind of hinting here that if they had those monitoring systems, they probably could have, you know, gone out, you know, a tech could have gone out there and patched up the coolant system or something if they were going, oh, it's over temperature. Um, yeah, I guess someone could have ran out there and actually saw what was going on. But because uh, they weren't getting any alarms or whatever, the first thing they knew is the things are light. Um, so yeah, and once that starts, you're not even going to go near it, let alone be able to stop it. Uh, the effect of mega packs failed safely despite despite total loss. Um, I I don't I don't know. I don't understand the statement at all. How can they have failed safely? But were but one of them when one of them totally caught on fire, how does that fail safely? I don't understand. I don't know. I I don't get that comment at all. ESV has advised Tesla there is no objection uh, to the recommencing of commissioning of the VBB. We read that before. Yeah, it's going to happen like tomorrow, because um, they're happy with everything except I guess the spacing of the packs, uh, the physical uh, spread thing. But that doesn't affect it being put back online, really. Uh, they've fixed everything else by the sounds of it. ESV has reminded Tesla of the general duties applying to the owners and operators of complex the take reasonable care. I, you know, I don't know what they're implying there. I think they just put that in because they have to. It's just, you know, um, it's typical government speak. Um, watch Utopia, by the way. It's a bit of a non sequitur. 
Watch Utopia. I think it's called something else in the US. I believe it's available in the US, but it's about a fictional government agency and it's hilarious. It's like office space kind of thing, but a complete um, series. It's 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 great. <laughs> if anyone who works in the public service will uh, just think this is a reality TV show, let alone a fictional one. Anyway, it's great. And they're asking Tesla to provide final results of the investigation when available into why the fire resulted in the loss of the second mega pack. Well, that's obvious. Uh, even if Tesla had a say in how they were configured at the site, it was right next to it. Um, and what to do to prevent the circumstances arising again. It's this far apart. You saw it in the photos. There's no way. <laughs> so I don't know who, who made the call on that configuration. Just going to look at other Tesla Megapack installations. Look, there are, uh, yeah, Jewel. Jewel, yep, yep, they're all back to, oh, they, these are the smaller ones, I think. Yeah, this seems to be like a standard recommended, oh, that's a that's a uh, artist's impression. That's a standard recommended, that's Tesla's recommended uh, configuration. Seems to be what's going on there. Yeah, there's not much gap between those, is there? So, yeah, in fact, they're bolted. They're bolted together on the top there. They've got that um, thing. Although, why the one behind it doesn't have it? That brace holding them together? Um, yeah, that, that's obviously why the second one caught on fire. I don't think that's just the physical configuration. There's no way you can stop that when they're that close. I mean, this is, you know, this is pretty good separation. As you saw, there was like char, you know, assuming this one caught on fire, there was like char into this one over here because the heat just spread and it was just, you know, it had soot and everything else. But, um, you know, so this gap in here seems to be uh, adequate, but because the wind was blowing basically straight down there like that, um, yeah, we just don't know. But these ones seem actually to be uh, much closer. Look, they've butted the uh, four pretty close together. But there you go. There's another configuration there. So a uh, mega pack of Britons. There's there's a Britain one. They've mounted them on these like metal uh, frames instead of like concrete. So so it all vary. It, it does seem to vary. I think that's part of the uh, owner and installer to uh, to do that. And you know here's one which has uh, there. That's an older. That's not the uh, the new mega pack thing that's the uh, smaller one that one's got uh, more space in and stuff in there so yeah it does seem to uh, whereas the uh, moreable one um is yeah you know relatively close here but even that small gap there was enough if the wind was blowing in that in blowing in the right direction that was enough not even i don't even think there was a mark on this one next to it um it's amazing what the wind uh can do there so yeah we just got soot on the other ones and so there you go yeah i think that's up to the uh, owners and operators rather than tesla i guess they have recommendations but it seems like uh, you don't necessarily have to follow them and they're going to see if there's any breaches of the electrical safety act and supporting regulations and enforcement action is warranted so they're going to do further investigations not the that's not the um end of their thing but basically there it is um it was a coolant system leak and some component electrical type component i guess caught on fire due to the leak outside of the battery pack so it wasn't a failed cell there you go interesting huh so when so who's uh responsible for paying for this i it's within the mega pack like if the cooling system's internal i guess but then shipping and handling if somebody goofed that up, like maybe then Tesla's insurance insurer is going to wipe their wipe their hands of it. So yeah, I'm sure the Tesla insurers are battling it out with the knee neoin. Is that how you pronounce it? Um, uh, in, insurers to see like who's responsible for this thing. But yeah, it was a cooling um, system leak, and there were a couple of little oversights on the uh, on the design side of it. But ultimately, the cause, which, which they've fixed, uh, by the way. So hats off, Tesla's fixed this in under two. They've investigated this, simulated it, and fixed it in less than two months, and it's ready to go back online tomorrow. So yeah, hats off to the uh, Tesla engineers. I'm sure they'll work in overtime on this one. So there you go. That was interesting. That is the cause of the big battery. Fire, Victoria Big Battery Fire. It wasn't a it, it it wasn't a cell going exothermic. It was just some other component in there, apparently. That's their best guess. Um anyway, so interesting. If you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.